Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome. We're right now going to basically we're going to do the entire wheel project like we do for the mechanical one class in basically one go. Uh, this is just so that we can see uninterrupted what a normal project would look like in a drafting situation. So we're going to walk through the entire process in one go. So uh, bear with me. Um, I'm hoping our intercom doesn't kick on in the middle of this. If it does, please forgive us. And I'm hoping that we don't have any interruptions, but it could take a few minutes. So please join us and take your time. Now, whenever I start something, I'm going to start with a part. And I've got my information on my desktop. I've got my notebook out. I've got my injury notebook out, and I'm looking at it. Now, yeah, ours has been set up kind of wonky, so forgive me on a couple of these things. So first part I'm going to do is going to be the base plate. It's always the first part I do on this. So I'm going to start with a project. I'm going to pick. It doesn't actually matter which surface I pick. Um, I'm actually going to pan down and over and go drop in a plate. I'm just going to throw it out here. I don't actually care what size it is right this second. Because the first thing I'm going to do is after I drop it, I'm going to put some dimensions on it. This thing needs to be five and a quarter inch long and three and a quarter inches tall as far as this is concerned. Okay. So once I drop that on there, I'll finish that up and I will actually zoom to fit the page and I will tell it to extrude. And I know that this is five eighths of an inch thick, so I'm going to tell it five eighths. Now I could have typed in five eighths as a fraction, but I told put it as a decimal. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put on the rounded corners, which are half-inch fillets on the four outside corners of the object. Now this allows me to do a couple other things in just a second. You'll see what they are momentarily. And then I just hit apply. Um, basically what it allows me to do is on my next sketch, when I go and I want to drop points on this, I can hover and it'll let me snap to the centers of those objects. So I hover on this, I can then snap to that center point because these four holes are concentric to those Radius, okay? So I just use a whole tool here. I tell it it's 3 eighths of an inch thick or 0.375, and it just goes, well, it goes through all. Whatever's there, it goes through. Um, we hit OK there. I'll just click right here. I'll make another sketch. This is going to be the top of the plate. I know I've got a recess in the top of my plate here, and that it is 1.75 inches over from the right and the left. So I'm just going to control that. I let the top and bottom of this shape run wild, basically because it's going to cut air. When I do this extrude cut right here, and I tell it to go an eighth of an inch as an extrude cut in direction number two, it's going to cut air. Air doesn't matter if I cut air. Okay, so it goes in. So I just flip this around, and I go start a sketch on this surface, and put two rectangles here. And I just run them wide. I am careful not to snap to anything here. That does cause some problems. So I want to make sure this dimension right here is 1.5, and this dimension from this edge to there is also 1.5. And when I hit the finish sketch there, extrude this shape and that shape until it goes a cut. And okay, this is effectively done. I would tell it to be steel. I'm just going to grab a steel. Ooh, that's ugly. Um, let's get mild steel. What the heck? It'll look better. It's, I don't know what it's be made of. I'd have to go talk to the engineer, but that's it. File, save, put it on my desktop, and I'm actually going to make a new folder here. And we're going to call it wheel complete. Okay. So I'm going to put it in here, and I'm going to name this first part, all caps, mind you. Uh, wheel base plate, save. It tells me what it is, brief description. I can now close this and open up a new part. So a new part goes here. Yep, it's going to do that every time. Uh, next part I'm going to do is going to be the support. Now, I do my supports a little differently than some people. I always work on the base first. So I'm literally going to go like so, drag this out, just throw it on there. Uh, this guy right here needs to be 3.25. That's how long he is. And this dimension right here, from that corner to this bottom, needs to be 0.375. Now, I'm going to come up here and drop a circle, just wherever. That's a one-inch circle, and it's got a 1.5-inch circle around it. I believe that's the right dimension. So if it's not, I'll come back and change it later. I also know that I have a tangent line that comes up here. Make sure I get the tangent. Do the same thing on this other side. Okay. Now, I need to center this. From that edge to that edge needs to be, uh, well, let's not do the math. Let's just make the computer do the math. I give it the distance across until it divided by two. Okay. 
I tell the distance from here to the bottom it has to be 2.375 because I do know that. And then I can trim out like this piece here and hopefully that. Nope, it's not going to let me trim it. That's okay. I can go like this and I'm going to tell it to zoom all. And I will extrude not only this shape but this portion here. And that is 0 0.375 in thickness. Okay. I can come back. I can do another finish or a start a new sketch from this bottom corner, snap to it, snap to that corner right there, make sure I snap to it, finish that sketch. This extrusion is 1.125 or 1.5 minus 0.375. Okay, I can do it either way. I'm going to flip this around to the back real fast and do a start a sketch on this surface. And I need two circles, one that goes from the center of this out to even with it, one that goes from the same center out to tangent to this arc, finish that sketch, extrude that an eighth of an inch. Now I just got to put a few fillets on here. Uh, this is going to be a half inch fillet. Get on this corner here, that corner there, apply, close sketch. I'm going to put a hole here, again there concentric with those fillet. Well, they're rounds because they're outside corners, but they're concentric. I finish that sketch. This time when I do a hole, I have to have a counterbore to it. And this counterbore size is 0.625 there. It is an eighth of an inch deep and it is 0.375 through. Okay. So there they both are. Next thing I'm going to do on this is I'm going to pull up and put a fillet on here that is 0.125. And I'm going to select that edge, this edge, that edge there, this edge over here on the near side, and this edge down here on the bottom. Uh, when I apply that, this part is effectively done. Again, I'm just going to pick some mild steel. And where is that mild steel I used last time? Yeah, it's stainless, 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 stainless. Mild right there. All right. And I will file save, but in the same folder. And this is going to be still cap locks, wheel support. Okay. And hit save there. So that one's done. I can close it. Next one, new part. Now I can have all the parts stringing across the bottom if I want. I'm not doing that right now. Uh, start a sketch. This one I'm going to do. And uh, let's do the axle next or the bushing. Let's do the bushing next. So I'm going to do the bushing as a revolve. So I'm going to start a sketch. Like I said, first thing I'm going to do, establish a line right here. This is all of 0.75 long. Okay, I'm going to actually turn that into a center line right there. And then I'm going to rough in the shape of the bushing like so. Oop, that's not straight. We'll fix that in a second. There's that. This is going to go out here, line up with this in right here. Line it up. Now, if it ever gives you a trouble like this, you can always extend something out and then trim something off. Okay. So that will work for us. I can put some dimensions on this. I know this is 0.75. I know from here to here has to be 0.75 in diameter. I know that this one right here should be about one inch even. And I know that from here to there should be 1.5. Actually, it's 1.375, sorry. And I know that this distance right here should be a half inch. And that means that one will be a driven quarter. Yep, that's pretty much dead on right. So I'm going to finish this sketch. Make sure it's zoomed all. I just tell it to revolve because it's the only thing there. It finds it automatically. I say, okay. I can change this into brass because that's what it would be. Because, you know, honestly, um, you're not going to have the bushing be the same material. As the rest of it, it just wear issues. So I call wheel pushing and save. I'll close that one. Okay, next victim up is our, yeah, I love that, is our axle. We'll do the same thing. This axle is right about three inches long. So I go right here, point straight out on that axis, tell it to go three, tell it to go straight up. Well, I'll go three eighths of an inch. Inward, uh, that one is 0.75, up an eighth. Again, horizontal, 1.5, straight downward, 0.125, 
straight to the right, hit sum five, and then I will just close it right back where I started. You got to zoom in. There we go. Now, I didn't use the center line this time, but it will do the same thing for me. I just have to be able to pick the axis right here. And once I go OK here, I can use the chamfer tool. And I'm just going to put an eighth-inch chamfer on each end. There we go. Apply. And I can close this. Again, I can pick whatever I want up here. I'm actually going to pick a different steel. Let's use the... Let's use the alloy. Yeah, it's not shiny enough. I want something shiny. Uh, how about high strength, low alloy? That's shiny. Okay, uh, we'll go with that. So I'm going to save that as an axle. Okay, finish that sketch. And I will now close this. Okay, so I've got four of the parts here. I need just the last one, which is the wheel itself, which you'd see in these other videos. So I'm just going to go up here, new part, and I'm going to make the wheel in two pieces. So I'm going to go in here, start a sketch on, say, that surface. Again, I start with a line that goes out this way, and I'm going to tell it to go about 0.75 across. Okay, that line right there will be so. Now, I'm going to put that down quite low so I can eyeball in where things go. Now, i got to make sure I don't line certain things up. You'll understand why shortly, but the biggest trick we run into with this is that some people line up this edge I'm about to make with that edge down there. So I want to make sure that doesn't happen. So I do go wide, straight up there, back straight to horizontal there, and back down here to the origin. Now, here's where we get into some fun with the dimensions. This dimension right here from this point to that point has to be a big enough for that bushing. That's one inch. Okay. This right here is an inch and a half. Now, from this end, has to be an eighth of an inch. From this corner right here to this point right here has to be a quarter of an inch or two eighths because this is an eighth and that's an eighth. Now, from this point down to this point, it is exactly four inches. Uh, across this is half of one and three eighths. You can either type in that or you can go 1.375 divided by 2. It's going to be the same thing. And this is half of one and a half or 0.75. So I actually type in one point. I actually do it this way just to make things work. Now, see how it moved for me? Control Z. I don't want to do that. So undo. I have to make sure that this thickness stays at a quarter of an inch. Now, when I do change this one to be 1.5 divided by 2, it moves the right portions. I'm ready to revolve this. So I hit the finish sketch. I'll tell it to zoom all. I'll revolve it. It's the only thing there to revolve. We're good. Now, I only made half of the wheel. I need to revolve the back half here. So I'm going to flip it around so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to use the mirror tool. Just like this rev revolution, then the mirror plane is going to be this surface. When I hit the OK right there, it makes the entire wheel. Okay, that's what I wanted it to do. So when I go zoom all again, and I go to the isometric view right there, that's great. I'll change this material. Again, some sort of stainless. Let's use the non-alloy this time. What the heck? Um... I actually, I don't like that look. We'll just go back to the mild. Um, I'll save this as wheel. Okay. I'm ready to start assembly. So I'll just close this and I'll go over here to assembly. Now, assemblies become very important to us as we start doing these things. Uh, I don't want to place from content center. I'm going to place from my own drawings. I'm going to go out here to my desktop where I put that folder, complete wheel. The first thing I'm going to drop in is the base plate. The base plate is going to be our first piece. Now, I'm on the front view. I don't want it on the front view. I actually want to orient it correctly. In reality, it doesn't really matter. I can rotate it any way I want in the drawings when I turn them out. But I'm going to actually go right-click once, tell this to rotate around the Z, that X-axis right there. Now it's upside down. So I'll do it one more time, two more times. It's oriented in the right direction. I'll hit pick a spot. Right now, it doesn't matter to me. So there it is. I can drop a second one in if I want. I don't. I'm going to go OK. And the first thing I'm going to do before I do anything else is right-click over here on my model bar, my navigator, and I am going to ground that piece. I want to make sure that doesn't move. Um, from there, I'll go back to place, and I'll go put a support in here. So open. Now my support's, again, oriented in the wrong direction. So I can go, okay, let's rotate you around the Y. Okay, that's good for one side, but I want to do the other side first. So there he is. Now you want to rotate him around the Z. One, two. Now he's oriented correctly. I drop him off. Okay. Now we're going to use the constraint tool. I'm going to mate some edges. So I want to actually line up this edge right here, that very edge, and I pick the part I want to move, and then the part I want to move it to. That works great. So 
I'm going to rotate this around, hit apply with that one, do the same thing with this edge and that edge, apply. Now, what that's allowed me to do is I know that, that those two edges have to line up, we're good to go. Also, if you looked at it, you can actually see that these holes become concentric top to bottom, okay? So we're in good shape. Now I'm going to put in a bushing. So I'm going to close this. I can drop in a bushing. Now, you can actually drop in all of the parts at once. I don't, okay, just because I want to be able to control my stuff and have everyone see what I'm doing. So I'm actually going to change this to a insert, and this surface and this surface have to line up. There it is, done. Okay. Uh, next, I'll place the axle. It's oriented the right direction as well. Okay. Now I'm going to actually flip this around because I know that when I do that insert, that this surface and this surface have to line up. Oh, look, it's going the wrong way. Well, let's flip it over. Apply. Okay. So I just flip that over, that bushing and everything's in. You can see where everything lines up. We're all good. Now I'm going to do the wheel. Place a wheel. So I'll drop him in. Now, I'm going to show you something in this that's really important. In real life, I drew these to ideal sizes. They don't actually line up ideal sizes in real life. You actually have to have different sizes, otherwise things don't rotate. Like this should be a couple of thousands of an inch larger than this shaft right here. Or this should be a couple of thousands of an inch smaller just so it can move. And it will still be a pain in the butt if it's only a couple of thousands, given the tolerances, um, whether or not it will rotate. So we are not taking into account any press fits, squeeze fits, none of that. Got it? Um, no motions. Everything's just ideal sized. Okay, like it works perfectly if it all just exactly matches kind of thing. But I'm going to tell this circle and this circle to line up and flip it over the right way. There's my axle on. The other thing, and this is by design, you'll find out if I flip this over this way, there's a little gap right here. I'm going to try to rotate it between the axle is slightly longer. It's actually the same size as the outer edge of this wheel and this inner hub is an eighth of an inch smaller than this got it um basically that's so that things in real life could actually move and turn now i'm going to finish assembling this um i'm going to place on a bushing next bushing and i'm going to drop it in i'm going to have to rotate him around that y-axis twice drop him off okay constrain him from this edge to say that edge apply and then i'll go in here and i'll go place a wheel support and i've got to rotate him around that y once and then around that z-axis one two drop him off apply. and i'll use that same constraint lines i did before but just on a different side and i do have to change directions once in a while apply flip that up so i can see that edge i want to line this edge up with that edge other way machine there we go so everybody now lines up right it's assembled apply close i'm going to save this as we're going to call it as nope. got to get my fingers off those off those shift keys okay that's done close that one i'll make a presentation next now this one i'm just basically going to make an exploded view of this so bear with me. Sorry, I've got something scratched my throat. <clears> throat. Sorry. I'll drop in the wheel assembly. And now it drops in like so. I actually prefer to do it um, with the left side towards the front just because I my brain works that way. Okay. Once I've dropped him in, I'm just going to tweak some edges. So I'm going to actually tweak this surface and drag that plate straight up. And I'm going to go, mm, let's go about two and a half inches. Okay. I'm just eyeballing this right now. I'm not actually getting too specific about it. I'm going to pick on this piece right here, which is this support. We're going to pull it off that way. I'm going to actually take it out about five. Might have to go further in a minute, but we'll see. I'll tweak this next component will be this bushing, and I'm going to actually pull him back this way. And I'm going to eyeball him so he doesn't quite touch. And he's at two, negative two and three-eighths, roughly. Um, we'll just call that good for right now. Check that off. Now I'm actually going to rotate my camera view around to the side a little bit so I can do the other side a little easier. I'm going to tweak and tweak this component, which is the other support. Pull him off this way. I'm taking him out that way a good six and a half inches, okay? Just so I got enough room to put everybody uh, out here. So next I'm going to take and I'm going to go tweak and I'm going to drag this bushing off. So I'll get that bushing, 
pull him back. Now, I'm going to rotate so I can see where he's at. It shouldn't lock me up. Good. I want to get him close so I've got enough room to put the wheel and the axle in there and see them. That'll be fine. These are, we're not being really specific about things right now. We're just wanting to make sure everything lines up so it's visible and is easily understood. Okay, that'll work. And then I want to take this last one. Now, I could animate this if I wanted to, but I'm not going to. So I'm going to just pull that back out like so and go, oh, I need to move that a little further. So we're going to tweak things a little bit in the end. Okay. I'm actually going to take this and this. So the support and the pushing, I'm going to move them a little bit further just to make things a little clearer. That's why there's literally a gap between each piece. Okay. So that's what I want. I'm actually going to do a safe snapshot view. Okay, you'll notice it over here. That saves my snapshot for other things that we're going to do later. Um, maybe not right now, but we'll do it later. And I'm going to save, and I'm going to call this the wheel exploded view. We'll just put it wheel exploded, okay? Hit the save there. Now I'm ready to put this all on drawing sheets. So we'll start drawing sheets right here. First thing I do on the drawing sheets is I change it to the correct size. So I right-click on sheet right here, go to edit sheet. I go straight here to the size and I change it to a B because that's what we use for most of our stuff. I'm leaving it sheet name, whatever. Um, revision number, if I wanted to, let me go back in there. I can change the revision number right now to be zero because this is just the initial version of it. Okay. Um, I can go in here to the drawing and I go in here to I properties. And in our case, I'd go in here to this and title. Well, this is the wheel project. Uh, and that'll work, and I'll go subject. Well, that is CAD. Mechanical Design 1, author. Well, that's me. Okay, I can put my full name in there, whatever. Manager company. Well, I work for business. Okay, Iron County Schools. Doo -doo -doo. I will put my name in here, too. Um, revision number is still zero because it's the initial project. I could put in, uh, let's call it, let's call this project is zero, project zero one. Well, let's put it this way. That, this project is actually CAD Mechanical one. It's the first project and it is 2020 school year. Okay. So I'd put in the project number like that, description, stock number. You can fill all those in if you have them in real life. Most companies will have that information on hand. Um, but I'm just going to close that out and we're ready to go. I'm going to start dropping pieces in here. So I've got one sheet. I know I need, so this is going to be the assembled. Then I'll have an exploded view. I'll have the largest part. And then, so which, which should actually be the wheel. And then the support, the plate, the bushing, and the axle. Okay, so there's seven drawings all together. Now in class, I have the students actually make a tire to go on this, which means they then have to do a revise support. And, um, a tire drawing and then a revised assembly drawing. So I that's as far as I make them go, just so they practice making revisions. But so I'm right here, I'll go back to sheet number one and I'll start dropping things in. So base view, pull this down. I'm gonna find my assembly, which is right there, and open. Now my assembly comes in flat to me. I'm gonna turn it isometric. I'm gonna check my scale over here. I like this to be one to one. I'm going to move that by just clicking and dragging on it, like literally on the image right there. That's probably good. I can put in a parts list right now if I want. I don't want to right now. So I'm just going to leave that alone. It's actually a drawing. It's line drawing. It's not shaded. And for right now, that's going to work for this class. Now, next one, base view, project. I'm going to put the exploded view next, open. And I'm going to scale that up a little bit, half scale. That won't work. Pull it over here to one side. I can place it about like that in the middle of this drying area. That's the larger portion of it. Okay. Now, before I go any farther on this, I'm going to go to Anote, and I'm going to put some balloons on this to number the parts. So I have to select the view, which is this view. And I'm literally going to select every part in it. So I just highlight them all. I say, okay, we're not, how do I want it? So I go select placement. Well, I don't like horizontal, and I really don't like vertical alignments of all these. I prefer a round just because it makes more sense to me. Um, so I'm just going to drop them in like so and say apply and OK. Now I'm going to close this. Notice how this part number five goes clear and the heck across the whole drawing. I don't want it there. I'm going to move it. I can literally click on a part 
and move it, uh, the part number. The other thing I can do is if it doesn't attach where I like it, so it doesn't line up good, I can move it that way too. So I can literally just click on one of these, like, see part number three? It's almost vertical in its leader. That's not good. So we don't like vertical or horizontal leaders. We like diagonal leaders, okay? Um, part number four, that's too close to three, so we'll move it out here a little bit, move it in closer. Got to make sure I click right. Uh, it didn't like me either. Click. Ah, oh, you darn thing. That's why I love these sometimes. There, no. There we go. It likes me now. All right. So we get those squared away so they're not horizontal, they're not vertical. Um, so let's move that over there. Move this over here so it makes a little more sense. So there we go. There's my parts. My parts list is on there. Oh, my parts list isn't on there. Let's put a parts list on. Select the view and say, okay, that works. Now, because I put the bubbles on it, there's all the parts. They're listed. If I updated descriptions on all the parts, they'd be there, but it gives me the part quantity, the part item number, so I can identify it. We're good to go. Um, never ever dimension to an isometric drawing, which is what this is. So we need to do drawings of all of them. So we'll go to the next sheet here. And like I said, we'll do the biggest part first, which in this case, place views is going to be the wheel itself. So base view is going to be the wheel. So it's my largest part. I bring him in. He's sideways to me. Well, I'm going to make him full sized. And I'm going to actually rotate him here. That shows the most detail. That becomes my front view. I'm going to drop him right like that. And then I'm also going to make an isometric view of it right there. Go right click and click OK. I'm going to drag this isometric view over here so it sits just nice in the corner. But why did I not do a right side or top side view? Well, one, the top side and the right side will be the same. But this hub rests inside of that edge. If I try to dimension how wide it is, I will end up having to dimension to a hidden line in the side or a top view. That's not right. So I need to go to my anode real quick, drop a center line on this guy, come back to my place views, and I'm going to use a section view right here, select this view. Now if I line up with that center line, see how I just hover over it? Pull up, you'll see a little dotted line following my cursor. That's good. I'll get up about, I'm eyeballing, about an eighth through a quarter of an inch, go straight through the middle of it, come to the bottom side of it, about the same distance, right there. Now I'll right click once and go continue. If I pull out here to my right, it'll make a sectional view right here and it'll label it AA. So that's cool with me. There's section AA. Notice I can now dimension to non hidden lines. When I go back here to anode, I can go dimension. I can click on this edge, pull it up. There's my outside. Okay. I can click on this one, pull it up. There's my next piece. Click on here, pull it out. There's my next one. Now to do these inside ones, I don't want to, I try to put the dimensions between views, but I don't want to get it too crowded. So I'm just literally doing it like that and trying to do it so it makes a good, easy read and it makes sense. Now, next piece. Got to go back over here to my center lines. I need to put a center line that's parallel between this and this. There we go. Now I can put some more dimensions on. So dimension across the top of this. There we go. Dimension from side to side here. Now this is going to end up in the part. I don't really see a good way not to put it there. It's not really great, but it's not what I would really want to do if I had my druthers. Um, this part right here, I'm going to put this, how wide that web is. It goes in here. Now notice I went from left to right. The side I picked the first side, it's going to put the dimension to. I like that there. I'm going to go OK. I need to pull this number out this way, though, if I can. And that's not really great to put that dimension, that extension line through there. It's really all I've got, though, with this. So with that, I have every piece of information I need to build this. So that's good. Next sheet. Uh, again, place view. Now, the next one that's got the most detail will be the support. So I'll drop him in. OK. Now, he comes in upside down, but I'm cool with that because of the way it is. Now, if I pull my cursor, I can actually drag him around. If I pull my cursor up, it's going to project a top view up. It's going to project a right view over here. And if I drag it up diagonally, it's going to project an isometric view there. I'm OK with that. It's one to one. I'm going to go OK here. And I'm going to drag this isometric to the corner. Now, isometric is pictorial. It does not show center lines or hidden lines. These show hidden lines. I'm okay with that. If I don't want to, I can always right click on, on like the base view here and edit the base view until it turns hidden lines off. But right now, I want them. So I'm actually going to turn on this and I'm going to actually put in all my center lines right off the bat as quick as I can. Okay. Um, 
between the parallels, which means between that hole and that side of that hole there. Same hole here, top to bottom. These counter bores here with the bolt holes there and there. Um, that's all my dimensions I need, or all my center lines I need. The trick is, oh, I scrolled the wrong way, bear with me. This should actually stick up about an eighth of an inch. Okay, about the same length as sticking out the bottom. The reason it didn't is it sticks up an eighth of an inch because it's this cylinder here, but it's the same hole. So I'm just eyeballing that, okay? I'm going to do the same thing on this side. There it is, okay. So now I can start dimensioning this. I got what I need. So I'm actually going to kind of squash things around a little bit. Dimensions should always go between the views so we can get comparisons, and we always use unilateral baselines when possible. So I'm going to start here. And I'm going to start at this bottom edge, and I'm going to go to the top edge, and I'm going to go to the center line right there. I'm going to right-click, go continue, and pull it out here to my right between the views and place it. Now, I will right-click once and say create. Here's the deal. This I didn't dimension because it's a radius. Once I have this and I have its radius, I know what it's got to be. So I'm not going to dimension up here to the top of this, and I'm not going to dimension up to the top from here to here. That would be a double dimension. We don't want those. Okay, I'm actually going to dimension to this and then use my dimension tool to put a diameter on this and a radius on that. Now, if I want to, I'm okay with bringing that over here. We try to keep it between the views. That's probably clean as neat as it's going to get. I'm okay with that. Next thing, I'm going to come up here to the top view, baseline again. Well, I need to know how wide this thing is crossed. So I'm going to give it all size dimensions across here, actually location dimensions. I don't have a size up there. This is a size dimension. These are locations from this edge, where the center of this is, from this edge to where the center of that is. From this edge, that's the size across. So, okay. So I'm putting those dimensions on just like that. Um, that's pretty much all I have to do there. On this other part, um, I can get really specific. I can go a baseline from the back edge here to there to the end of this center line, out here to the front. If I want to, I can even put one back here to the back side of it. Right click, continue. That will line up all my stuff nice and neat. Pretty like, so I'm okay. Um, we may have to fudge some dimension placement around in a minute, but we're okay with that. One of the things I haven't shown you is how to use a hole dimension. Well, there's a hole right there. So I click on it, and because I use the hole tool to make it, and I'm going to pull it out a little bit so I've got room to put in the radius right here between the views. I'm going to put that right there. And that tells me the diameter for the through hole is 3 eighths. And the counter bore's diameter is 5 eighths. And it only goes eighth of an inch deep. Now, this is all truncated to two decimal places, but that's fine with us. That will give us what we need. Dimension. Bring it in here. Make sure I get that radius symbol. I'm going to click on that line. I pull out. That way it comes out good. Um, I'm actually going to tell it right here to go... Lowercase x times 2. Okay, there's two of those. Um, I can put a general note on it that says all dimensions, unless otherwise specified, are eighth of an inch. So do I actually need this view? Yes. For clarity, do I have any dimensions on it? Well, I've got this dimension right here that is the same as that. I've got this dimension from here to here, which is that one. It's the same as this there to there. I've got this dimension that's this vertical dimension that's here. I don't really have any other dimensions on there. If I want, I can go and really and truly I can get in here and zoom in on this fillet right here. It's kind of a pain in the butt sometimes. Pull that up, and I can just put a TYP. Well, let's actually just spell Pimco all the way out this time. Pimco. Okay, so there's my fillets. Anywhere that's got a fillet on it, it's typical. Okay. Um, for CAD Mechanical 1, that's where we're at with it. So we're good to go there. Next victim. Oh, I got to hit OK here. Sorry, right click OK. I didn't finish my dimensions. Next one, place view, base, come up here. Well, it's got the support. I've got the wheel. I've got the support. I have not done the base plate yet. That's my next biggest one, base plate. He comes in. I'll place him over here. I love the fact there's an image hiding in there, by the way. Um, put on those two views, an isometric view up there. Right click OK. So, that isometric sin so he looks a little better. Let's move this over and over a little bit just to line things up nice and pretty like. All right, I'm about to go with this. Yeah, that'll probably be fine right there. Um, back to Anote, center lines, and I'm just going to click like this. Just 
so I get them right in the right spots. Um, my through holes go here. All right, and I go okay right there. If I want to, I can actually create a center line that goes from like right here to right there. And another one goes from right here. Oops, see, that's the problem with that thing. I don't like that one very much. It tries to make curves. So let's use this guy again. If we go from right here to right there, create center line. From right here to right there, I click create. From here to there, create. Here to there. Create. So those holes, it shows that pattern is symmetrical and things, so we're all good to go there. So now I just go baseline dimension again, and I'm going to start on the right-hand side of this and go right along this, and I'm only going to dimension to object lines. I've never, ever dimensioned to hidden lines. Right-click, continue, pull them up, place them right like so. Right-click, create. Same thing, baseline. Go from the bottom edge here to there to here to there. Right click, continue, pull them in between the views, click once, right click, create. Fudge that over a little bit. Now, I'm going to put a dimension up here, baseline, that goes from here to there to there. Right click, continue. Now, that gives me the thickness of that plate. I can do it just easily here, but I kind of like it up there better in my brain because it does get the offsets right and it lets you see what's going on. Continue. And then I'll put a last dimension that goes from right here to right there. Okay. Oh, I did it wrong. Sorry. Right here to right there. Pull it out. Place it. Right. Yep. Okay. So there they all are. This view right here doesn't have any dimensions on it. doesn't need any dimensions on it because they're all in other places. But it's best to have it. Now I'm going to use the hole tool again to dimension these holes. Okay. There he is. And I'm going to use... And right click, okay. And I'm going to use the dimension tool right here to get this fillet right here. Whoop, got to make sure I get the fillet mark. There he goes. I hate going right through the cross. Okay, it bugs me. Um, and I'm going to tell it to do that four times. Down here on this, uh, right, okay. Down here on this, and I can double click on it. And I'm going to tell that to do it four times as well. This drawing right here is done. I'll get that off that a little bit just to make it prettier. Um, I'll you used to have to do all the math and make sure this ends up center. Right now for CAD, I'm just eyeballing it, make it clean and neat and as readable as possible. So that's the there. Now I'm going to go down here and next drawing, next biggest part is the axle. So let's find my axle right there, open. And I'm actually going to turn my axle to be a side view. And I'm going to scale it up to be a one-to-one. -one. Let's go two to one. That'll be better. That's better. Drag him over here. Go OK. Now, if I want to, I can go in here and do another base view because you don't actually always have to do these with the hard way. So I'll go Axel OK. And I'll bring him in. I'm actually going to turn him like this to me. And I'll drag him up here in the corner and just place him like that. OK. Right click. OK. So that puts my axle up there. Now, notice he's got hidden lines in him now. I don't want the hidden lines in that view. I want them in these views but they all line up. So I can actually right click on this view, tell it edit views and change it, its style right here. And that takes the hidden lines out. Now, the other thing I'm gonna do is, and I did this on purpose, put the center line in, and I'm actually gonna make, okay, right click, okay. I'm gonna make a section of this wheel, no, this axle, just like I did with the wheel, just so it gives a nice, sectional view there okay and then I can go back here and get my annotation dimensions well I only need this dimension okay and this dimension here this is a chamfered edge that is a different type of measurement so I'll put that in here like so if I want to I can bury them down here I'll probably put that there for now and then move the view in a second um, mostly because I don't want things to interfere with each other, so I'll just kind of nudge them around a little bit, maybe move this down a little bit further. There it goes. That's a good spot for it. Then it's still kind of between the views, but not perfectly, and then I can baseline from this edge to there, 
to here to that edge there right click continue pull them up place them right click and create it so there we go um everything i need to know to build that is on there now uh, and then the last one is the bushing same kind of situation place views base view we'll actually do this in the same way we did the other one um open i'll put my bushing in here i'm actually going to turn him so i get this view of him i'm going to scale him up a smidge to a two scale drag him over here and then drag an isometric up go right clicking okay put the isometric now over here in the corner and then take this guy right here and i'm going to make another sectional view of him i don't have to honestly but i'm going to um just because i kind of prefer that look to this just to make sure everything reads easily I don't want to have anyone. It's good practice for our students, honestly. So I'll put the center line on it. Okay. And then I'll go back here to place view section. This is the one I'm working on. Pull it up. Draw right through the middle of it. Right click once. Continue. Pull it over here to the right hand side. There it's section CC. And now I can just do some dimensions. Go back to Anote. Dimension. Well, this is kind of weird to do it this way, but it, we did it anyway. There's that one. It's the lowest dimension. There's this one. It goes right above it. Okay. And I'm actually going to put the outer dimension right down here just because it seems like it makes it easier to read. And then I'm going to baseline. The critical dimension on this is actually the distance from here out to here and also over to here. So I'll right click continue. Now there's a problem with that. It, if that's critical dimension, that kind of looks dumb. Okay. That gives me a size dimension. And I actually don't want it. So in real, reality, for our students, we have them do it this way. Start at one edge, go across, okay? Like I said, I'm doing this fast, but that tells me that the overall dimension is 0.75, which fits the axle right, and then there's no math involved for anybody. They just have to know to cut it to that size, okay? Um, great. So I'm missing a center line through here. And other than that, I am done. That is the complete wheel project. So thanks for your time, and... I hope to see you around later, and I hope you enjoy the work. Bye.